Good morning, First Central. I just want to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day, even though we cannot be together, but we are still together. Um, I just want to give thanks and praise to my mother for being there. I wish I could be with her, and I'll see you soon, Mom. Um, but I know God is making a way, and in this time of turmoil, not knowing God is still in control. You made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looks as if it was over You, you made a way And we're standing here Only because you've made a way Made a way now we're here, looking back at where we've come from, because of you and nothing we've done. Your grace was strong enough to pick us up, and you, you made a way. When our backs were against the wall, and it looks as if it was over You, you made a way And we're standing here Only because you've made a way You move mountains You cause walls to fall With your power Perform miracles, there is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you've made, you've moved mountains. You cause walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles, there is nothing. That's impossible And we're standing here Only because you've made a way Made a way Made a way You move mountains You cause walls to fall With your power Perform miracles, there is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you've made. And we're standing here only because you've made. And we're standing here only because you've made a way. Made a way, made a way. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for continuing to make a way for us in this time. Thank you. Good morning. It is good to be with you again on a Sunday morning to worship and praise our God together, to grow together, and to glean from his word. I want to extend a happy, blessed, safe Mother's Day to all of our moms Thank God for you. Where would we be without our mothers? Thank God for our big sis, our aunties, and all those who stand in the gap. And certainly a special thank you to my mother, Dolores Carolina McKenzie. We love you. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank God again for Mother's Day. Let's continue to celebrate and thank God. If you're blessed to still have your mother, take some time and love your mother as much as you can. And if you are unfortunate and don't have her with you Please take some time to remember all the things that mom has done for you. Today, I would like to focus on a rhetorical question, if you will. A question that has many answers and then one common answer. And that question is, what's going on? What's going on? Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, just a few verses, starting at that 15th verse 
should be familiar to a lot of us. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord said, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the armies and reinforcements together, and they laid there, never to rise again, distinguish, extinguish rather, uh, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen. Doing a new thing, doing a new thing. One, one of my, my favorite childhood songs is that of Motown sippy song singer Marvin Gaye his golden hit, What's Going On. And many of you in my generation can appreciate that and those who are older. Uh, this 11th studio album written and produced by Marvin Gaye asked a powerful and always relevant question. And, and this question uh, really requires a listener to pause and to think and to take time to look at a larger social reality of the day, the causes of what we see, and to take time to understand the contributing factors of the conditions in which we live. Asking what's going on. It requires a conscious response. It requires us all to face our part in our cir own circumstances. Uh, one of my uh, many jobs that I hold, and I do have several, is the director of uh, New York, one of New York City's Cure Violence Initiatives run by the CMS or Crisis Management System in New York. It, it looks really at the violence that is around us as a disease, right? And the goal is to identify the root causes of violence and, and to address them, thereby eliminating the, the disease itself uh, and eliminating violence, eliminating violence from our communities. Uh, you know, like the song title, not only looking at it, but having a desire to look into it, at what it is really doing and how it is doing what it is doing and what cause is it to occur. I hope that makes sense. Things like poverty, system of inequities, poor education, historic and systematic racism, you know, health care disparities, intolerance, and so many other self-centered, willful sociological behaviors that are interwoven within our society. And let's face it, we are either benefactors or being victimized by our present reality. And in some cases, we're both, we're both benefactors and victims. And without saying it, the the song has a way of encouraging us to make a choice to either accept or challenge what's going on in the world around us. And what struck me is how the song title fits within the uh, prophetic and prolific prose of Isaiah regarding our present reality. Written thousands of years ago, he says, starting at that verse 15, I am the Lord. Listen to what God is saying, your holy one. Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the seas and a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and, and the horses and the armies and reinforcements together, and they laid there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. It's easy to forget uh, what is really most important. In the hustle and bustle of life, we tend to forget that. And sometimes in times of ease, we also forget what's important. All of humanity has a way of turning from God to itself. We forget what's most important, family and friends and people 
uh, that really make our lives what they are. That's what really matters. For example, during crises, those who were really invisible are now essential. Let me say that again. Isn't it amazing? Those who were relatively invisible now are called essential. Uh, the everyday worker, the truck driver, the school teacher, delivery person, the mail carrier, cooks, airline workers, custodians, day laborers, nurse, nursing home employees, hospital and health care workers, sanitation workers, first responders, and more. All are important and they all really do matter and they matter more now than ever before in our conscious minds. Where were we and where would we be? without any of them. Uh, what doesn't matter is whether they were black or whether they were white, rich or poor. This virus has proven once again, people are people. No matter your country of origin, your age, your shoe size, uh, we are all in this thing together. And it's not just a, a one-time deal. It's a virus, people. It comes in waves. Uh, and, 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 and it will remain amongst us, and that's why it's time to really stop, to challenge and to charge ourselves to appreciate change and appreciate doing things differently in a different way. I know it's not always comfortable, but being different and thinking different is the order of the day is not only a new norm, it's the way in, in the time in which we live. We have an opportunity to pause and to look at the collective reality of our human experience. We need not to fall back into a segmented game of separating and isolating people into groups of us and them. It is far too easy to fall backwards into that. But the text says in the 18th verse, it says, forget the former things and do not dwell in the past the hustle and the bustle of life, the short-sightedness of get it quick and to forget about tomorrow and not to plan. Those who are children of baby boomers knew well how to plan and to prepare. And we in this generation now are being taught that it's not all about today. We have to plan and prepare for tomorrow and we can't forget the lessons of yesteryear so that we can safeguard ourselves in the here and now. The text says in the 19th, 19th verse, see, I am doing, listen to what it says, a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness, a spring in the wasteland. Uh, things may look bad, but God is providing us with opportunities to do better, to get closer to him and to get closer to each other, to appreciate the simple things of life, to pause and to breathe. Watch this. Uh, the things that give us comfort at this time cost very little money. Really, some in, in many instances, no money at all. A kind word, an encouragement. You know, texting somebody and just encouraging them. Look at uh, old family pictures and enjoy multiple church services on any given Sunday via Facebook and YouTube. Appreciate having a place to live and actually living in it and not just sleeping there. Reaching out to our elderly, FaceTiming family, uh, being forced to talk and to communicate with each other at a deeper level than we have before. Uh, this is all what's going on as we are engaging each other in this pandemic. And guess what? We're praying more. We are reaching out more. There, there are more ways in which we are communicating about our God. The text says to us in the 19th verse, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? You know, new things, great things, blessings are happening on around us. Yes, many have died, unfortunately, but many are living who have never really lived before. I'm making a way, the text says, in the wilderness, springs in the wasteland, in the midst of our wilderness. God is making a way for us. It is about what you're focused on. Things may not look like you want them to look, but God is providing us with opportunities to do better, 
to get closer to him and to get closer to each other, to appreciate the simple things of life, to pause and to breathe. And whatever and whoever you are, you must come to know and to appreciate who God is. I know at some point some of us who were supposed to be of the church have forgotten who God is, but he's reminding us that he really is in control. Do so. Know who he is and do so to better realize what God is really doing, to better understand what's going on. We have an opportunity to pause and to change. God said through his word, through the words of the prophet in verse 15, I am the Lord, the Holy One, Israel's creator, your king. Make him Lord of your life. He understands your pain. He knows your suffering. But understand from suffering comes strength. If you haven't gone through, you don't know what it is to get through. Having gone through what you've been through have made you stronger and better and wiser. What's going on is the question. God is still providing a way in the wilderness. That, that's what's going on. God is still Alpha and Omega. That's what's going on. God is still the author and finisher of our faith. That's what's going on. God is still making a way out of no way. That's what's going on. And even when doors are closed, he's still opening windows. That's what's going on. Uh, we have an opportunity to walk and to talk and to celebrate this thing called God making a way. So when the question is asked what's going on, we can respond to our children and generations after this that we had faith. We walk through the wilderness knowing that God is still able to make a way. We've seen this in history before, time and time ago, again, and although it's new to us, it's not new to God. And we will come through this on the winning side. Why? How are you so sure, preacher? Because of Jesus. He was born as a baby and preached as a child, killed as a man, but rose as a victor. And he's coming back again as a king. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future. And because I know who holds my hand. What's going on? God is what's going on. He is still God. He's still on the throne. Hold to what you know to be true. Hold to what you know is truly the word of God. Be faithful. Be true to him. He's able. He's never left us and he will never ever forsake us. When a question is asked, what's going on? The response, although can be many, ultimately ends up with the fact that God is still God. We will follow him. We will trust him and he will lead us through. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you on this Lord's day. I'm hoping that you have been encouraged by this brief word. We want to remind you that uh, you can connect with us at the First Central Church. Ministry is going on. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. Please reach out. Let's continue to encourage each other. Let's maintain social distance. Wear our face masks. Wash our hands thoroughly on a regular basis. And let's be reminded that although the curfew may be lifted, the, the quarantines may be lifted, we must practice responsible, intelligent measures so that we won't uh, be affected again in a negative, punitive way. This virus is a wave. But thank God, his spirit is always with us through the ups and the downs. God bless you.